Okay, and we are back. Uh, today, uh, I'm taking over the ship. Uh, I'm going to be a captain of the uh, of the good ship Praxis. Um, for our regular viewers, if we have <laughs> regular viewers, it's usually Torik. But today it's me, um, Natalia, um, leading the, the ship. Uh, we also have an interim pirate with us, uh, Nina, and our regular anthropologist, Elizabeth. And we have crossed the ocean to um, talk to Karis, who is a member of our Practice Theory Consortium crew. Um, so, hi, Karis. Can you tell us uh, who you are, where you are, and what you do? Yeah, my name is Karis. Uh, I'm uh, an entrepreneurship scholar, and I am in Syracuse University in New York. And what do you do there? So, I do research on entrepreneurship, um, broadly speaking, uh, but a bit more specifically on new venture creation um, and how people might combine the venture creation activities while they're still working full time. That's uh, pretty much what I've been doing research on. Great. Nina? Thank you, Natalia. Um, could you maybe tell us where and how you first encountered practice theory? Yeah, so it was my advisor, Ingrid Erickson. She introduced me to practice theory um, because we had been chatting about my research interests uh, and she found that I was also struggling to understand how mental models of the world uh, don't really seem to fit what people actually do. And so she suggested that I read uh, up on some uh, practice theory and... I liked how it represented reality by attending to what people say, what they do. It makes it more tenable. Um, and so since then, I, I, you know, I sought out um, ways to connect. I found the consortium. I found uh, many other people doing practice work in entrepreneurship studies. So there's a community called EAP, Entrepreneurship as Practice, uh, where I found a really good community as well. So that's how it's, it's uh, the journey has been so far. All right, very interesting, especially the fact that there's this whole community of entrepreneurship scholars working with these ideas. Um, could you maybe, I mean, you've touched on that a bit, but maybe tell us a bit more what sort of attracted you to practice theory in your in your research? Yeah, so specifically with entrepreneurship, uh, the field has evolved and I think there there's a tendency to focus on the entrepreneur, right, the person doing the work. Uh, and then also to characterize the entrepreneur by um, psychological traits. Right? So entrepreneurs tend to, for example, be um, they, they take risky uh, decisions and, and actions. Uh, they're more daring. Uh, and and the, these psychological perspectives are one way to view it. But with the practice view, you tend to attend to what they're actually doing. So how do they entrepreneur the things that we 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 see. So we're not only focusing on the the actors, which I think tends to um, dilute the story a little bit. Um, and and so that's how I've seen practice in entrepreneurship. And I find that attractive because then I can study entrepreneurship by looking at what people are actually doing and understand it from that perspective rather than see it from as one example of cognitive perspective or even from a purely economic perspective. And so that's one of the things that attracts me about practice theory is I get to see what people actually do. And I like to observe um, and, and see it actually happen and, and take shape in the real world. That's super interesting, especially this sort of decentering of, you know, the heroic, daring leader, which is super present in, in this kind of field, right? Um, so could you maybe tell us a bit more about these sort of ideas or concepts you're working with in a, in a bit more detail? Yeah, so um, one of the main ideas that I've been working with, so I, this the, the topic is hybrid entrepreneurship, right? So people are full-time workers and at the same time, they're building their ventures. Um, and, and, and so what I look at is how are they actually combining 
there these two work contexts. Um, and as you can imagine, there's a lot of practices. There's a lot of managing time, actually managing time, making, carving out time, um, relying on other people to come through for you uh, because you have all these demands. Um, and that's not something that we've really grappled with with the entrepreneurship literature, uh, unfortunately, uh, because people tend to think that someone building a venture is doing that full time, right? So it, they, it, it doesn't really look, our views have really, um, we've overlooked the pressures that people have to work around and the constraints. And so I, I'm I'm basically taking um, a practice perspective and, and asking people, what are you actually doing to make this work, the, the this, this dual work context that you have? Um, and then I'm also looking at tools that people use. Um, and that's something I practice also of force because objects matter um, in in to how people actually make things work, right? So for example, um, the technologies that they're using to manage their absence from their ventures right, matters to how they're able to make this hybridity work. Um, and so I think practice allows me to step outside of the the, the constraints that some prior views may uh, set in, in place. Thank you, very interesting. And with that, I'll pass it to Elizabeth. Yes. So, um, well, I'm, I'm wearing the anthropologist's hat and I'm curious about tribes and I'll, I'll ask you about tribes in a minute. But first, I'm, I'm interested to follow on the conversation with, with Nina a bit as to what you find a bit difficult or annoying about practice theory as well. So you're trying to stir in ideas that might be quite theoretically incompatible in, into a field full of individualistic heroes. So what, what are the struggles that you face? Yeah, so I, I think the main struggle is dealing with the complexity because re reality is complex. And when you try to capture it, it in its complexity, you get a lot of data, whether it's because you observe or you um, interview and try to get at the complexity of things. Um, and so it's a feature of the world. And I think practice helps to unpack that, uh, but you still have to deal with the complexity. And so I am currently struggling through the analysis of the data, trying to parse it out, this complexity. Uh, but it's also something I, I think is necessary and enjoyable in and of itself, because that's just how reality is. It's not as simple as we make it out to be. Um, and so I guess the beauty is in the struggle. Great. So, so I am interested in tribes and it's good to know you're not working with these struggles on your own, but tell me a little bit more about the groups and networks that you're part of and how that came about, actually. Yeah, so I have, I'll talk about two groups. So with my advisor and some of her co-collaborators, we, we have a smaller lab. We call it the IF lab, mm -hmm. Innovating Futures Lab. And that has been a, a really strong tribe where we all understand the, the, the practice language. We want to speak the practice language. Uh, we want to represent reality as in as complex a form as we can. Um, and so that's always been a very uh, supportive group. And then the EAP community I mentioned, Entrepreneurship as Practice. Uh, and that I found, I, I don't even recall now how I found it, but I think I had already started this journey with practice after my advisor had introduced it. And then I, I must have seen it online somewhere, reached out to them, uh, sent in a a work a workshop paper, and I've I've just been glued to that community ever since. Uh, but in there, you have people studying entrepreneurship as practice, relying on various um, theoretical angles and different kinds of data. Uh, and there, we've organized uh, coding camps, for example, uh, writing camps, all virtual, because a lot of practice uh, people that use practice tend to be in Europe. And so that uh, geographic 
uh, distance, it, we, we bridge it through um, virtual um, technologies. But yeah, mm -hmm. I found a pretty good community there in EAP. Great. So it's yeah. nice. I see you're in you're in springtime at the moment. So something a bit weird is going on with the time space warp of this ship. But that that happens when you're on a ship. Um, okay. So what what souvenir are you going to give us from springtime in Syracuse? Yeah. So it's 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 uh this is not related to the the weather here at all. But okay, it's a pill. And okay. You, you may not be able to see it now, but it has some lines on it that are symbolizing a face. And in the pill, when you open it up this way, it has a letter in it, like a scroll. And then, so I, I just like these things. I bought a couple of them and every now and then I, I, like I write some words of encouragement or just like nice words and then you could just give it to someone but this is the souvenir that i'm gonna share i'll send a picture uh later on and you're gonna write us a message as well maybe yes yeah. <laughs> this, this, is, this is this is a message in a bottle isn't it really we should definitely be exactly in but in, in a pill this time yeah 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 because well, words can be like medicine that we, we take Yes, exactly. Thank you so much for that. And so um, where should we go next? Who would you like to meet on that? So I I would like to meet Betsy Campbell. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry? Is she on the map? She is on the map. She is on the map. Um, and she, she does pretty interesting work. Uh, I've read a little bit and I'd be interested to, yeah. To hear mm -hmm. what she has to say. Do you remember where she is? She's in Pennsylvania. The last time I looked at the mm -hmm. map, I think it's Penn so State, we, but we, I'm not 100% sure. We, we stay that side of the Atlantic. Yes, yes. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for having us visit. Thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you, Caris, and for our regular viewers, I kind of like addressing those. <laughs> Stay <laughs> tuned because we, uh, yeah, during our ex next episode, we may end up in Pennsylvania. We will see. Okay, bye.